Good morning. Lawmakers in Washington are concerned about Chinese citizens working in top American science labs, and they're conducting hearings as to whether we should restrict access to our laboratories. This CEO of a California company testified that our default should be an outright ban on Chinese nationals working in national labs. There looks to be bipartisan support for more restrictions, despite admitting that Chinese researchers are making big contributions to American science. In a report last year, 19% of STEM workers in the United States are foreign born, including an estimate of 8,000 Chinese and Russian nationals working in U.S. labs. Our national labs perform research in nuclear weapons, clean energy, and artificial intelligence, among other things. And in the labs for AI, here's the problem we've got. And this chart tells a story. This is from Nikkei Asia, published just a few days before the hearings in Washington. This is where the top AI researchers at U.S. firms and institutions graduated from. There's a higher percentage of artificial intelligence researchers in the United States who graduated from Chinese universities than who graduated from American ones. Dark blue and light blue are the differences between 2019 and 2022. The percentage of graduates from the United States has gone up, but from China it's up a lot. Europe is down, India down, Canada down, everywhere else down. So in U.S. labs, it's graduates of U.S. universities and Chinese universities that do most of the research, about 75% or so, and those numbers are rising. And an important distinction, too, is that this survey only considered where the degrees were awarded and not who earned them. So Chinese nationals who come to the United States to earn degrees in the U.S., would show up in the U.S. column, even though they're not Americans. We comfort ourselves with this. The United States continues to dominate AI research. In 2022, seven out of the top 10 papers in 2019 and 2022 came from U.S.-based experts, including Stanford University and Google. Tsinghua and Peking universities are also claiming top spots. But we've asked this question several times before. What is the extent to which we claim top research work being done at top American companies and universities as our own, American, simply because those buildings are located in the United States? Because Silicon Valley has wrestled with this question for a long time of who really owns the intellectual property. Who does it belong to? Does it belong to the company where it was built or to the people who built it? This closing paragraph sums up the position we're in and the position that China's in. If those researchers come back to China, the Chinese government and companies and universities here would reap large rewards. And they've been doing this in lots of other fields. These Chinese haigui, sea turtles again, could just buy a one-way ticket back to China and start work here in China the next day. And we should probably expect that very thing if we tell Chinese researchers they can't go to work tomorrow in U.S. labs. This is Lanzhou in Gansu province. Be good. Strength against temptation and trial. You will be totally overcome. 